So how do things dissolve? Well, it has to do with intermolecular forces of attraction. So if we think about dissolving sodium chloride in water, there are forces of attraction between the water molecules. There are forces of attraction between the ions in the sodium chloride. And there are also forces of attraction between the solute and the solvent particles. Whether something will dissolve or not depends on the relative strengths of these forces. So water molecules really like each other. They have hydrogen bonding. They're really tight with each other. Sodium and chloride have ionic bonding, and they're really tight with each other too. So they're not going to want to separate from this thing they really like unless you give them something else that they really like, right? Well, sodium ions and water have ion dipole forces, and those are quite strong as well. Chloride and water have ion dipole forces. And so the sodium and the chloride are willing to separate. The water molecules are willing to spread out and let the sodium and the chloride in because even though they have to break these attractions, the attractions that are formed are similar in strength. <coughs> so like dissolves like predicts that all ionic compounds would dissolve in water. And we know that that's not true. Calcium carbonate doesn't dissolve in water. The attraction between the calcium ions and the carbonate ions is, is too strong. Now, predicting which ones dissolve is, is actually quite complicated. And so we just use those rules of solubility, and we're not going to go into the details of that because it's just too complicated. Um, so here, the sodium and the chloride ions dissolve the chloride comes over here. Um, it's lured away by the positive ends of the water molecules. They make it feel comfortable. Let's go over here. And the sodium gets lured away from the solid by the negative ends of the water molecules. So the sodium chloride crystal put into water, um, the sodium and chloride ions separate. They disperse disperse, and they're, um, they mix homogeneously in the water. Well, solubility um, can be quantified. It's the amount of the compound, usually measured in grams, that will dissolve in a certain amount of liquid. Oftentimes, it's 100 grams of liquid. So we can talk about the solubility of sodium chloride. At room temperature, it's 36 grams per 100 grams of water. So if you have 100 grams of water, you could dump 36 grams of sodium chloride into it and stir it, and if you stir it and wait long enough, it will dissolve. That's considered a saturated solution because the water is full of sodium chloride. It can't hold any more. Like a saturated sponge, if you put more water on it, it just runs out the bottom, right? It's full. It can't take any more. It's saturated. So a saturated solution is at the solubility for that temperature. It has the maximum amount. If you add more sodium chloride to a saturated solution, it will just fall to the bottom like sand, and it will not dissolve. If a solution is unsaturated, that means you could put more in. It hasn't reached the limit of solubility. Your solubility, or what's dissolved, is less than the solubility. So for sodium chloride, if you had 20 grams of sodium chloride in 100 grams of water, that would be an unsaturated solution. If you add more, it will dissolve. And then we can have supersaturated solutions. So a supersaturated solution has more than the normal maximum amount of solute, which kind of sounds impossible. Um, the way supersaturated solutions form is you take, you, you, you form a saturated solution at, say, a higher temperature where the solubility is larger, and you allow that to cool slowly and undisturbed. And as it cools, the, the solute remains in solution 
but it's an unstable solution. And if it gets disturbed, it will precipitate. Um, I think of it a little bit as a, you know, the old cartoons like Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner and stuff, and they were always running off the edges of cliffs, right? But if we run off a cliff, that first step, we go down, right? They run off a cliff, they run several feet out straight in the air, and they don't fall until they realize that they're not on the ground, right? The supersaturated solution is like that cartoon character out there. He hasn't recognized that this shouldn't be happening. But once you point out to him, hey, wait a minute, you're, you're standing in midair, then he falls. The saturated, supersaturated solution, once it's disturbed, it falls. It precipitates out. Um, another supersaturated solution um, happens in a soda can. A soda can. So soda is fizzy because it's got carbon dioxide dissolved in it. They dissolve carbon dioxide in the soda and um, keep it dissolved by putting pressure in the can. So there's always a little headspace in the can. It's never full completely to the top because you need a, a bit of gas up there. It's carbon dioxide. That keeps the gas dissolved in the liquid. Once you open it and you hear that sound or you open a two liter bottle, now the carbon dioxide begins to come out of solution because it's supersaturated, and it will just keep coming out until it goes flat. Um, here's some illustrations. Here's a supersaturated solution of um, sodium acetate. And just by touching it with the stirring rod, um, you cause the crystals to begin forming. So I've got a couple of YouTube videos here for you. So that's a, a flask with supersaturated sodium acetate in it. And you stick a rod in there, and these crystals just begin forming. Isn't that cool? And so that's the sodium acetate crystallizing. And the crystallization occurs until the solution becomes just saturated. And this is the other video. Here they're just playing around. So sticking toothpicks in there and the crystals grow on them. Blue look like pom-poms or cotton balls. When that happens, it releases energy. That temperature there was 52 degrees. Um, sometimes this is called hot ice because it looks like it's freezing, right? It's going from a liquid to a solid, um, but it's becoming warm. It's warm to the touch. So it's not that it's frozen, it's it precipitated out of solution, making sodium acetate can castles. But then if you let it touch, the crystallization will travel all the way up into the beaker. bit like playing with dominoes. <coughs> That's supposed to say ice. We don't want to look at that video. Any questions? 
if you remind me in lab today, I can do this in class. So we learned about solubility rules, and those give us a qualitative description of the solubility. We say, well, this one's, this one's going to dissolve, and this one isn't. <coughs> um, as mentioned earlier, some ionic compounds are not soluble because the attraction between the ions is greater. Molecular solids, um, some of them are solid, uh, solid, they're all solid. Some of them are soluble, some are not. It depends on whether the solid is polar. So something like table sugar, C12H22O11, these oxygens in here make sugar a polar molecule, and so it dissolves in, in water quite nicely. Uh, Nonpolar solids, such as lard and vegetable shortening, are not soluble in water. So when a substance dissolves in water, it can form either an electrolyte solution or a non-electrolyte solution. In an electrolyte solution, you have dissolved ions. You have charged particles. Those charged particles can carry electricity. This solution will conduct electricity. A non-electrolyte solution, such as sugar and water, here what's dissolved are molecules. These do not have ionic charges. They cannot carry electric current. So this is a non-electrolyte solution. When they talk about replenishing your electrolytes after working out and sweating a lot, um, electrolytes in that context are aqueous solutions of ionic compounds. And so they are electrolyte solutions. Solubility um, varies with temperature. With a solid dissolved in water, usually at higher temperatures, more will dissolve. And at lower temperatures, less will dissolve. There are some compounds that are different. And at higher temperatures, they actually are less soluble. Um, we can, what can help us remember this trend is to think about sugar. So if you are trying to sweeten your tea, if it's hot tea and you put a teaspoon of sugar in there, the sugar dissolves very quickly and easily, right? If you have iced tea with ice cubes in it and you put sugar in there and stir it, how does that go? It's really slow, right? The sugar will dissolve, but it's going to take a lot longer. And you can get less sugar dissolved in cold water than you can in hot water. <coughs> um, so this is a solubility. Um, grams of solute in 100 grams of water for several different ionic compounds. And we see that as the temperature increases, the solubility changes. Some of them are linear, some of them are not. Uh, recrystallization is a way to purify a solid. So the other day we made alum, potassium aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate, right, in lab. And you got these crystals. Those were not extremely pure crystals because they formed quite quickly. And when that happens, they can trap impurities, um, and they're just not going to be really nice crystals. If we had let those crystallize slowly overnight, um, we would have seen really large crystals with definite shapes. Um, we just didn't have time to do that. But you can recrystallize a solution um, to get better crystals. So you, what you do is you take your crystals, you dissolve them in water, and you heat it up so that you get a saturated solution at that higher temperature. Then you let it cool down slowly. Most compounds will not form supersaturated solutions, so yours probably won't do that. As it crystallizes slowly, um, the, the ions have a chance to form a beautiful crystal lattice, and they tend to exclude impurities um, because they get in the way. And so they'll form really nice large crystals that are much, much purer. So that's recrystallization. Um, you can use recrystallization to make rock candy. Uh, rock candy is just sugar. 
um, in nice big crystals. If you want to do this at home, I would encourage you to look up a YouTube video or an eHow instructions or something because if you don't do it right, it won't work. It's, it's not that hard, but you have to have the right ratio. So you make a hot solution of table sugar and water, and you hang a string in there, and you let it cool and stand for several days. And as it cools, we get big sugar crystals growing on the string. I tried that when I was a kid, but I just, you know, did it without looking anything up because the Internet hadn't been invented yet, and it, it didn't work.